Today we're checking out another super cheap tuning laptop. Stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage. And as you can see, we've got nine days and 12 hours left on the counter over here to get the Typhoon done for Rocky Mountain Race Weekend. The garage is an absolute disaster zone. But I wanted to take a minute. You guys have probably seen this video specifically on one of our earlier GTO videos. This is the Asus, uh, I think it's called the uh, E210 or possibly the L210, which I'll put a link down to Amazon down below if you're interested in checking this thing out. But this is our latest super cheap tuning laptop with Windows 10 on this. It's about 185 bucks, Windows 11, maybe 200 to 210. So you're looking about $200 total for this laptop and in the past we have done cheap laptops and I've literally gone out there bought the cheapest laptop I can find and we've seen whether or not it can tune this time we are actually doing a name brand Asus is somebody uh, that if you've been in the computer world for any amount of time you have heard of this, these guys and so this is their entry into the super duper cheap laptop that still runs Windows which means we can still run all of our tuning software so all in all, pretty happy about this. We're going to jump over the table here in a second, take a closer look at, fire it up, see what the performance is like. But if you're interested, we will be giving this away to a patron here after Rocky Mountain Race Week. So keep your eyes peeled patrons over there. Interested in becoming a patron, getting some tuning assistance, things like that. Hit up the description down below where you'll find everything. Links to our Patreon, links to our website, links to our partners, Nitrous Express and HP Academy with discount codes, all kinds of stuff. Take time run by the description and also like and subscribe if you haven't already. That does me the biggest favor that you could ever do. But let's jump over the table. Let's take a look at our super cheap tuning laptop and see whether or not it's going to work as a nice uh, replacement for something expensive. That way, if it gets dropped, oh, we're not out six, seven, eight hundred dollars. OK, so here's our unit. As I said, ignore everything that's going on around here it is an absolute total mess in here. And I've got my side camera set up so we can kind of see what's going on. Uh, up close to the, the laptop here. And we're going to take a look first and foremost at the ports that are on the side of this laptop because that's kind of one of the most important things when it comes to a tuning laptop. On the right hand side, we've got a USB A, perfect, headphone jacks, you know, if you need them for whatever reason. Nothing on the back, nothing wrong with that. And then on the other side, we've got another USB A. So we've got two USB A's and a USB C. So three total USB ports on there, HDMI if you want that, who cares. One of my biggest complaints with all these cheap ones, they use a barrel connector for the charger. That's neither here nor there. I just don't like that, especially this has USB-C, but you can't charge over USB-C on this. If they had spent the extra couple dollars of making this chargeable over USB-C, I would take one of these and toss it in the trunk of everywhere that I went just to have a backup laptop because this thing is 200 bucks. I mean, you can't complain three USB ports on it. But even though it does use a barrel port, the battery life on this thing is astonishing. So we're gonna go ahead and open this thing up and see if it wakes up, if I need to power it on. The light is on already over here. And as you can see, as soon as I open this thing up, it has this funky 10 key on the touchpad thing. I don't know why they did it. It's worthless, you can't do 10 key on this thing. And the only complaints, it wouldn't be an issue except you turn it on by hitting this side over here as a button and sometimes you inadvertently turn it on and instead of moving the cursor around, you start typing numbers. So I just had a camera malfunction and had to turn this thing back off. So let's turn it back on and see how long it turns to boot up here. Here we go. Now we're booting up. Bio screen. And oddly enough, this thing had not been plugged in in over a month. I plugged it in for about 10 minutes before shooting this video. And it's got to 99% battery. So it hadn't lost much battery being in sleep mode for the last month, which is another great sign of how well the uh, battery does on this. Okay, we're up to the desktop here. That doesn't mean much if we can't open up Windows. It's flashing a couple times. Hit the enter button. Let me type in my pin. Okay, and we'll see how long it takes to actually get to the desktop. Not bad for a cheap laptop. This has an Intel seller on in it that runs at like 1.2 gigahertz with two cores. Nothing crazy. I mean, it's a $200 laptop, but it does have four gigs of RAM. Most of these cheap laptops have about two gigs of RAM. 
So we do have the four gigs of RAM, and I'll remember it probably only has about 32 uh, gigs worth of memory, maybe 64, we'll have to check. And apparently we're going into an update, and that's why it was taking so long. So let this thing go ahead and update, then we'll jump back into the video. Fucking thing. Okay, it's done updating, it's loading the desktop now. You can see that the toolbar has not loaded in yet. Once again, this is part of it being kind of slow. It keeps on popping up Windows. It's trying to update like Windows Office or Microsoft Office and stuff like that, which should probably just be un uninstalled on this thing. You, you're not gonna wanna do much more than tune and maybe surf the internet on this. And to give you an example, let's go ahead and let's do uh, explore and see how much memory is in this thing how much hard drive space it has. Whoa! And uh, it's got 64 gigabytes and 17 gigabytes free after I've loaded up HP tuners and stuff like that. So you're not gonna be storing a lot of movies or content on these things by any means. We'll see if that goes away on its own. And let's launch Chrome. While there's other stuff going on, this could be absolutely painful. Eh, not bad, not bad. Chrome pops right up. We'll leave Chrome open and we'll just continue to open things and see if we have any issues like we have in the past. We don't need you OneDrive, go away. So we're trying to launch the scanner right now. Scanner tends to be where you can eat up a lot of memory on these things and have some issues, but it opened up pretty quick. We open up a recent log file. Here's the GTO log file that was taken on the 3rd of last month. It popped open if we scroll through our menus, our graphs. It's pretty responsive, pretty responsive, not bad. Let's go ahead and open up our editor now. So we're getting multiple things opened up. And as you can see over here, our battery percentage, 94%. So pretty good given that it was off the battery for, or off the charger for like a month and then only charged for 10 minutes before shooting the video. And there are editors open. Yep, not responding, that's pretty normal. I get that on almost all my uh, laptops whenever I first open it up, and it opens up our first edit for our 2004 GTO that we did. Now the big question is, is how quick does it respond clicking through some of the tabs? Not bad, not bad at all. We'll open up the airflow versus frequency. We've got our graph on there, seems fairly responsive. Yeah, I realize that it needs to restart. Calm down, you don't always need to restart. Let's open up our VE, split this out and put our 3D graph up so we can see it. And pretty responsive. You can see moving around the 3D graph, it doesn't lag behind too bad. We make adjustments up or down. Seems to be responsive. Undo them all. Hey, not bad. So let's do this. Let's save this file as and see how long it takes to save one. Or, oop, I don't know where it just did. First edit two. Just save it. Okay, pretty quick. Save file, nice and quick. So as you can see, the thing is responsive. Even with Google Chrome open in the background, which takes up a lot of memory and slows down all these cheap laptops, I'm still able to click back and forth between the editor and the scanner, no problem. And let's just go ahead and open up a couple instances and see what happens if we get like three instances of the scanner open and two instances of the editor open and whether or not it starts hating live. So we're opening up the same tune again. It, you can definitely tell it's slowing down, but still not bad, not bad. So instance one, instance two, we can quickly switch between the two. We've got actually four versions of the scanner open now. And if we go into the task manager, we can go and see what our performance looks like. And we're pretty much maxed out everywhere, except for the hard drive. Uh, CPU's maxed out at 100%, which means it's running at 2.3 gigahertz. Now it just dropped off, kind of caught up. Memory's been running about 87 or 90%, so we're 
not doing too bad on the memory. Figuring we only have four gigs of memory, we're maxing out the CPU more than the memory. But if we were to come in here and close these out and get more in line with just doing a simple scan and log on a cheap laptop, we can see kind of how it responds to that. So. Yeah, now we're running into some memory issues. We're getting to not responding on this scanner. Okay, we got the editor down to one window. Now we got the scanner down to one window. And memory dropped down to about 80%. CPU is still maxing out though. So pretty CPU intensive software HP Tuners is. Uh, that's because the platform that's built on is a little bit older and it doesn't have as good of memory management on there. So that's about to be uh, expected. But this does have enough CPU that it, even though it is maxing out the CPU, is not backing it up and having issues. So all in all, a pretty solid little cheap $200 tuning laptop. So listen... That's going to be it for this video. If you have any questions or you have any uh, suggestions of cheap laptops that you like to run, make sure and hit up the comments down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And remember, if you're a patron, you're going to get a chance to win this thing. So keep your eyes peeled for that giveaway. And you guys know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.